G'day guys and welcome to the Sunday Beginner Series where each Sunday I cover topics to help you build a great foundation into this awesome, awesome sport known as lock sport and lock picking. And as promised, today and possibly next Sunday, depending on how much I can get done in one go, I'm going to take you through how to make pinning trays, simple easy to use pinning trays like these so I'll take you through where I got the uh, board from how I do all the channels and the uh, spot just here where you can put all your uh, lock bits and pieces and you slide all your pins and your springs into the uh, chambers just here so I'm going to take you through how about how I go about making these and hopefully this will be a one part, but it may be two parts to this. So we'll head out to the workshop where I've got everything set up, ready to go, and we will start making these. The only thing I won't cover is paint. I'll, everyone knows how to paint and how to play around and make their own different patterns on them and whatnot. Uh, so I will tell you how I do the painting, but I won't bore you with uh, going through it all. So we'll head out there and uh, we'll get stuck into it. So see you out in the workshop. And I've marked up one ready to go, but I'll take you all through it. So what I use to make these cool little pinning trays are actually these little paddle boards. So pick these up from Kmart in the uh, home maker section where all the kitchen stuff is so they're just small little paddle boards for, for uh, serving so nice little boards they've got some really nice grain and pattern to them and you can pick them up pretty cheap as well I think I paid about $3 each for these boards so this is what I use the other tools you will need I've got sitting here ready to go. I use a Dremel with a router attachment that I picked up from Bunnings. I think I paid about 40, 50 bucks for this, if I can remember correctly. I think it was about 40 bucks uh, for the router attachment with the guide, which works absolutely fantastic. You also need a ruler and a pencil just to mark out everything and I use two Dremel bits or router bits so for all the chambers I use a 134 this is a round one keep it in here so I don't forget so a nice round cutting and engraving tool for PVC wood and whatever that one is so they work absolutely fantastic for all the chambers. Slide your pins and springs in. And then for the flat spots in the tray, the little uh, mini tray inside, I use a 115, which is a flat end for the Dremel. Like this, so I can get a nice flat bottom to it and then get a nice straight edge so everything all sits in there and doesn't fall out. This is one thing I've learnt. Most of the boards that I've made and the ones for the giveaway all have a round edge all the way around. Uh, it wasn't until after I picked this up to uh, play around with it that I worked out it works a lot better. So they're the tools you're going to need. And I have my board here which I have marked out. Ready to go. So with these boards they are from the handle To the end they're about 230 millimeters which works out to nine inches so my measurements I always go from the bottom end here I measure up 130 mil as you can see and then 130 mil and I mark that off put a line there I then go from this end and measure back 120 mil so I have a one, about a one centimetre line 
down here. One thing I should say, not all these boards are exactly square, they're not exactly flat. Some may be thicker on one end than the other. So it all they all have little variables in it. They're not exactly perfect. But for pitting trays, they work quite well. So measure out 120. One on so I measure out and I have my two outer lines here. I then go 60 millimeters right through the center, which will give me my center line. So then from the center line to this line is how long my pin chambers are going to be, which I have marked out. Then I go from the 60 line back 30 millimeters and put a line in here for 30 mil space. That there will be the flat tray part that we cut in and it leaves you a nice border around the edge to put your name or whatever you like on there. You've seen all the ones I do, I'll put a sticker on. And then I'll put all the numbers of the chambers down here, paint the inside and I clear coat the whole thing. So that is all our valve measurements. So let me get the first bit set up with the Dremel and we will go through and uh, start putting some of these chambers in. Okay, so I've got it all set with the round bit in and I always measure each chamber will be one centimeter from the very front edge. So from this spot of the piece to there to the uh, guide is one centimeter for the first one. Second one will be two centimetres, then three, four, right up to 70 centimetres, which 70 millimetres or seven centimetres, which is the maximum this router will do. So as you can see, I always double check and measure every time before I cut. But the two most important cuts is your first chamber and your last chamber which is seven. You want to make sure they are as straight as possible because that will give you your guide for routing out the rest of rest of it. So I set my Dremel to the maximum speed which is six and then I'm going to pretty much plunge cut straight in I'll try and get this on a bit of a better angle for you. So let me quickly pause this and I'll set this up on a better angle. Okay, so I've got it set, ready to plunge cut down for the first chamber. Now, when I do the plunge cut, the marks here between the 30 mil and 60 mil mark, I'm gonna go in the center of that. Uh, that way, if there's a little bit of wiggle, it doesn't really matter that much because I'm going to straighten out all this edge with a flat. So we'll go in the middle, and it would help if I turned the power on, wouldn't it? It's got it, and we are going to plunge cut straight in, try and keep everything nice and square. So as you can see, plunge cut the first one. Now I'm going to go all the way right up to this edge just here, right on the end, so the 130 mark. So now I've got this set. And go ahead and take your time. It may smoke a little bit, but it's all right. We're just gonna take our time, make sure we do it nice and straight as possible. And I do apologise, my hands are in the way. So let me quickly do this one and we'll come back.
as you can see I've gone right up to that edge now I'm just going to go back to my uh, 30 mil mark and go right to the edge of that one that will give me my guide for the first chamber and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the seventh as well so quickly run this one back As you can see, I kind of went off a bit, but I can neaten that up just a smidge. Once I put the square one in round square off this edge, I can neaten that up. So that's why this one has to be perfect. But sometimes you do get a little bit of a mistake like that. So I'm going to do that with each one of these chambers. So let me do that. We'll come back to it. Okay, so I've cut all the chambers and some of the spacing wasn't exactly perfect. Um, it happens time to time with the, uh, sometimes if you don't tighten the guide up, it's really nice and tight. It uh, sometimes likes to get a bit wider or a bit shorter whilst pushing the router through. But got all these bits done now we just got to put this chamber in along here put the flat edge in and a nice little uh, tray in this bit but that will be next time otherwise it's going to be way too long of a video so I'll see you back inside in the uh, down to the lock picking station soon Alright, so that's part one of the two parts of making the pitting trays. I didn't want to go making too long a video, and I didn't want to go throwing a heap of information all in at once. So I'd rather break it down to two, so that I can take you through step by step through it, and uh, you know, give you a better demonstration on how to make them. So that's part one. Next Sunday, part dukes. So. Anyway, as always, always follow the codes, keep lock support legal, you know. Don't go doing anything stupid. Please jump down the bottom here, down the bottom here somewhere is that little subscribe button. Hit that one and that little bell icon right next to it. That way you can stay up to date. As soon as I upload a video, you'll be one of the first to know. You know, I try to upload two to three to four videos per week, depending on work and everything else that I've got going on. Don't forget to come and join us on Discord, the Extraordinary League of Pickers. Link is in the description below, so definitely come and click on that link and come and join us. You will not be disappointed. Don't forget, you can also find Dark Hearts Lock Picking on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where we'll put up posts, photos of what's going on in the background, all the fun stuff that happens around here, pretty much. If you're looking for great equipment at very competitive prices, please check out locksmithstoolbox.com. They're an awesome Australian company, and as you know, that's where I'll get all my lock picking equipment from. If you would like to get in contact with me, you can contact me through any of the social medias, Discord, or send us an email at darkartslockpicking... Whoa! Camera space. Darkartslockpicking at gmail.com, and I will get back to you. If you like what you see, please give a thumbs up. Really do appreciate it. And until next time, cheers, guys. And I'm going to go vape my pipe.